Thank you for downloading and happiness. Dare to be happy. We are two curious friends that want to explore what makes us happy. In each episode, we will take a topic in alphabetical order and discuss how it relates to and impacts happiness. We will live the experience of each concept through a dare that we set each other and then talk about how it affected our happiness. As well as diving into psychological theories and evidence which supports or contradicts our personal experiences. In other words, in this show, psychology meets play. I'm Kitty Newman, director of Trapeze Media, a digital marketing agency that leads with social. My company philosophy is based on the importance of play in all our lives and how important it is to be happy at work. I have been obsessed with the circus for a few years, hence the name Trapeze Media, and making time for things like handstands and aerial in amongst the day-to-day challenges that come with running a successful business makes me happy. My name is Claudia Mitura. I'm a work psychologist and learning and development specialist with a purpose to boost happiness in the workplace. I love experimenting and applying scientific research on happiness to my daily ups and downs, or just to prove my other half wrong. I also like to look for happiness in unusual places, so I won't shy away from diving with sharks or starring in a pantomime. Sometimes this gets me in trouble. Hi everyone, welcome back to And Happiness. This episode is the letter H, where last time we met, we dared each other to form a new habit, try and keep it consistently for that week and see how it affects our happiness. Claudia. It's quite interesting that it has been estimated that 40 to 45% of our actions we perform each day are actually based on habits. Oh wow, really? 44%? Yeah, isn't that amazing? I kind of feel, well, I'm in control of my life, but actually my life, now I feel, is run by my habits. Oh, (laughs) but we're always told bad habits are bad, or you have bad habits. Yeah, I mean, if habits, if you have good habits, then happy days, right? You have lots of benefits from them. But if you have bad habits, they may be even threatening and dangerous. So it's it's quite interesting to think that Are we that in control? Are we that fully awake if 45% is our habitual action? Mm. And habit is an action that is repeated so frequently, it's done unconsciously. Oh, okay. So without you thinking, 44% of the time. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that that doesn't surprise me a huge amount, really. Uh, For me, it was more like, I realized it and I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) That's interesting. You think about your day differently. Can you think of uh, any specific routines like that or habits that you have and you repeat almost every day? Brushing my teeth, the way that I shower, the order in which I get dressed. I always get dressed in exactly the same order, like down to putting my socks on the feet right and then left every day. Even feels weird to do it the other way because sometimes I've caught myself like, I always put my socks on exactly the same order and I'll try and do it differently and they'll be like, "Mm, no, this is too strange. (laughs) Yeah, your brain is like, don't mess with the habit. Yeah. In the book called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhaig, he says that habit is composed of three elements. So one, there is external cue that prompts us to do the habit. So clearly for you is the act of dressing up. Yeah. This creates overall spike in our brain because our brain needs to decide what habit is the best response to that cue that appeared in our environment. Then we have the routine. So this is when unconsciously you put your socks in a certain order. You don't really have to think about it. And our brain is then on autopilot. It's the neurological studies show that during that stage, our brain is almost turning off. And then finally, you get the reward of completing the task successfully. So your brain wakes up a little bit again and thinks, great, let's reinforce that link between the cue and routine because I've man- we've managed to successfully complete the task. So this habit is good. Mm, yeah, I think I understand now why I failed miserably at this task <laughs> after hearing those three things. 
So when we don't have those bits, it's, it's quite difficult to form a new habit. And also there is a different approach when we're trying to kick a bad habit. Why do you think we as humans form habits? What's in it for us? The habits, when I was thinking about it in the week, the habits I have that are really good mean I don't lose things. So there's something there that's good in that you know the world that you're making or something. I don't know. Because if I put my keys in the same spot, I haven't lost my keys. I can't say that because I'll probably lose them now. I've just touched some wood. I haven't lost my keys for ages because I put them in the same place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else. I think it's like a comfort thing more than anything yeah definitely the control the comfort from like strictly perspective of evolution and our brain is we are saving energy oh because we perform tasks efficiently without really thinking oh my god okay yeah like zuckerberg wears the same clothes every day because he doesn't have to think about it so there's like more energy and space for him to think about being a uh, overlord (laughs) Exactly. So our brain tries to save that energy so that we have more energy to deal with more complex situations and decisions and things that are new. That's why brains really is very habitual and really insists on creating habits. Okay, that's amazing. Can you think about one habit maybe that you never really pay attention to or you could do half sleep or even drunk and it's it's just there? Uh, walking? No, <laughs> I can't walk when I'm drunk. The keys, definitely putting my keys in the in the tray is a habit, but I do sometimes still forget to do that. I have a definitely the habit of, I never remember locking my front door, but it's always locked. Yeah. And I never remember of switching off my straightener, hair straightener. But if you ask me during the day, like, oh, have you switched off your straightener? I'll be like, oh my God, probably not. The house is probably already burned down and I'm at work. But then it's always switched off. Yeah, right. But it's such an unconscious act. Yeah. And even if, you know, I'll be coming from a party and decide to straighten my hair, I'm sure I would have switched off. Yeah. Do you know what? I don't know whether I'm that habitual now because I actually think that I I'm always looking for stuff the the reason I keep bringing the keys thing up is because it was a conscious thing to put my keys in this tray to like make that a habit and actually I'm always looking for things because I put them in the wrong place and actually if everything and it's a my dad used to say this when I was younger if everything had its place then you wouldn't lose anything And I wonder if I'm actually not that habitual. Or you have a habit of putting things in random places. Or that's my habit. Yeah, that's my bad habit. (laughs) I don't actually put things back. I was looking at my life thinking, okay, 45%, it's a quite high figure of habits. And of course, it's not like daily. We're doing only those small bits like locking the door and straightening hair. It's not all about that. But I was just thinking social habits. I was thinking that at my home, everyone sits in a certain order at the dinner table. You have definitely relationship habits that I have with my other half, the way we operate now after 10 years being together. Work routines, even the way how and how many times I check my emails eating habits there is so many habits around us but also then there are habits we cannot see necessary like thought habits whether we feel positive or negative depends the way we assess certain situations and we have certain way habitual way of thinking now i definitely have i've been trying to like control a bit more of my thought process because my habits i'll just dot around a lot and so I think maybe it's more like these bad habits trying to I think I do work a lot on how to curb those so there's like structure in the day so that I'm not just dotting around on loads of different things and then I have to say out loud sometimes if my mind's getting distracted like to stop <laughs> I don't know if that's that's just being distracted but it's quite interesting that we have even like invisible habits of the way we think yeah just because it saves our brain energy it doesn't want to come up with a new assessment of the situation every time it just wants to use ready patterns we have in our head 
Yeah. Y- you're right. Like if you if you have a certain tendency to think in a certain way, like for me definitely my brain loves a little bit of catastrophizing, then I need to be quite conscious of not to go that way and now I need to say, okay, no, maybe maybe there's a better way, more healthier way to think about this particular situation. Yeah. I've never thought about those as habits before. I think I've always thought of habits as quite physical things. So uh, like going for a run, making that a habit. Or the the dare this week, how those were all physical, like practical habits to kind of implement. But they are habitual, don't you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause, and does habitual mean it's just like consistent? Yeah. It just follows the same, th- it's the same. Yes, consistent. And the moment there is a cue in environment, that pattern of thought pops out in your head. Yeah. And that gives you a kind of reward. So your our brain sticks with it. So something that I'm thinking now is, it's sort of like a judgment sometimes in my brain that I have to try and stop when it tries to take that easy route that you've just been explaining when I'll see a behavior in somebody that I've seen in someone before my brain will be like well that person's the same and then I have to try really hard and say to myself no you they've just done like one thing that's the same it doesn't mean their whole character is the same as that person just because of that one thing and I can see that habitual thought process now that you've explained that. Yeah. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's re- it really is. Yeah. How much habits is happening in, in our life and how many of them you can actually see. Mm. But my question also to you is, do you think all habits are equally important in our life? Mm, no. Some habits aren't important at all, surely. Some habits are completely pointless and disgusting. People have disgusting habits. <laughs> exactly. They are also habits where researchers call them keystone habits because they create positive or negative effects that spill over into other areas of our life. So the idea is that if you want to, it, it's, it will be very difficult for us to change all our habits, but if you want to change certain habits, or you want to develop a new habit, concentrate on a keystone habit. A habit that you do at certain time, maybe in your day, but brings you positive benefits throughout the day. So for me, for instance, that's definitely a meditation in the morning. Mm. If I meditate in the morning for 10 minutes, if I stick with the habit, then I'm more productive. I can handle tricky situation in a more constructive way. I'm just having more happier, calm down day. If I skip it, then my day is not as happy. Mm. But my brain sometimes forgets to link all those benefits to that one habit. Yeah. Because it happened only for 10 minutes in the morning. So then, of course, there are situations when my brain were like, wow, just let's sleep in longer rather than wake up. Can you think of an example of a keystone habit in your life? I think I've got a natural resistance to it. There are things that I do that have the same positive effect. So my version of meditation, even though I actually think I would really like meditation, but I've not given it a good enough thing, is going in the sea. So I live very close to the sea and I'll go in the sea for just a little bit and actually I think I do a sort of meditation in the sea because there's nothing happening and I keep my mind it's just me in the water I don't know if it's similar or not and running and so I will always try and do something before my day starts for me which is either running or go in the sea and so I will do that but I I don't do the same thing every day and I am sort of resistant to that But I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess the habit is doing something for me. And I do agree with you the same. If I don't do something, the the day sort of feels like it's been crunkled up into a bit of a ball rather than nice and smooth. Absolutely. Okay, so even though the habits stem from our unconscious, we can change them. We can change bad habits and we can develop new habits. It's tricky, but it's it's possible. Mm. And that's what our dare was. Mm. Kitty, how did it go for you to develop a new habit of reading every day? It did not go well. 
What happened? I did it twice. I thought about it every day. And I didn't do it every day. The day I did it was a really nice morning. I really enjoyed reading this short story in the book. And then the next day I was reading, but I got up later. I was starting to think I shouldn't have set myself this challenge in the morning. What I've been telling myself this week, because I've not been succeeding in this dare, is that it's hard to start a new habit. And this is, I don't know, I was finding it difficult. I love how your brain just came up with this excuse. Look, Kitty, it's hard to create a new habit. Let's yeah. just quit it. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't quit. I didn't quit. <laughs> It's the only dare that I've not done, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was laziness. I don't know what it was. But I felt bad. I felt like, I know this doesn't really help our topic. I don't know. Also, this week has been like quite full on week of like exciting new things happening in our family with my sister having a baby and like... I I have always been thinking that's a great excuse for the that's a great excuse for the podcast session. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't affect me at all. I've not got a baby here so crying, so that means I can't read my book in the morning. So this isn't the first time I failed at creating a new habit. Before we started recording this podcast, I downloaded this app called Fabulous, which is all about making new habits, and it was all about the morning routine. So it started you off really, really slowly. Like when you wake up, you're just going to drink a glass of water. That's it. That's all you have to do for a week. Just drink a glass of water and you, oh, like three days in a row and you click, chip, yes, 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 I've done it. Yes, 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 I've done it. And then the next time it's like, okay, you're going to wake up and then you're going to stretch for 10 minutes. Yes, 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 I've done it. And I just stopped doing it after a while. I was like, no, I give up on this now. There's something in me that just isn't tuned to it. Okay, so when forming a new habit, the key aspect is definitely have in place those cue, routine and the reward, those three components. And also the very important aspect for the reward is that you have to have a craving for it. It has to be important to you. You have to be committed to that. Because as you said, otherwise... You, we won't do it because it just becomes another thing that we're supposed to be doing, but not the thing we want to be doing. And that's the big difference. So I've managed with my dad. So whole week I was trying to write morning pages. So morning pages is a concept introduced by Julia Cameron in her book, The Artist Way. And the idea is that every day you write in the morning three pages. And you can write about anything you want and you are not allowed to read them back. The idea is that you park your thoughts so that you have a space to be creative. And I started it some time ago and I, then I completely quit as well. And then I came back to it through this there. And again, it's having those three elements and really understanding why I want to do it really helped me. So with the cue is something that reminds you to do the habit. So for me it was, I will make a cup of tea in the morning and that's where I will do my morning pages. Mm. So it helps also say a sentence, kind of, if this, then that, as in, if I make a cup of tea, then I will write my morning pages. So it's very clear for the brain to associate the two. Mm. Then you have a routine, so you need to understand how you're going to get there quickly. So my notebook will be there on the dining table. So when I would sit down with my cup of tea, the notebook is there. I don't have to look for it. I don't have to go and find some pages to write on. I don't have to look for a pen. Everything is there. And then the reward, of course, is that benefit that I've done it. But I need to have a craving for that reward. So I would say this is very important to me because... I know that if I write those three pages, then when I turn to writing a podcast, for instance, I'll be more creative. See, I didn't have any of those things. And I knew that as soon as you said that at the beginning of this, those three elements, I could see right away why I would not be likely to succeed. Because all I did was wake up and feel like I should read. That was it. And it, then it was just another thing that, I wasn't doing that I should be doing and I actually felt like it was a it was actually a bit of a stress in the week but I do want to read my book but 
I hadn't set up the environment or the triggers or the things like that to do it. And actually, I'm quite excited now. You saying that I'm going to incorporate the book in the swim. Mm. So I'm going to read the book on the beach and then go in the sea. Perfect. I think that's another solution, incorporating it, it into something we're already doing, which again, I've done with my cup of tea. I always make a cup of tea in the morning mm. with no fail. So it's kind of like, can you pair it with something you're already doing? So it just becomes like a joint habit. And there is, I think, two other quite important things. And obviously later on, it's repetition. The longer you repeat the habit, the more it sticks. But also this process of cue, routine, reward, you need to decide on it ahead of time. Mm. So this is what research shows, that if we're trying to change the habit, in the moment things are happening around us, we will revert to the old habit mm. 100% of time because our brain wants to save that energy and it just have a ready pattern for us to follow. So you need to almost decide like you've decided now ahead of time that when I'm going to go for a swim, that's when I'm going to read. Mm. With those three elements, what do you think it has to happen for us to change the bad habit? Oh, well, we need to move away bad triggers, triggers, things that don't help us get the thing or create good triggers. So I'll uh, keep coming back to like putting things in the right place. If you make a nice, the way I fixed my keys was making, getting a nice key tray. So I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to putting my keys in that tray. <laughs> Lame. So yeah, changing the cues, I guess. I need to remember the three things I always forget. Good cues. Routine reward. Routine reward. Oh, can we get rewarded for not doing the bad habit? Absolutely. You can definitely implement a reward. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Something I've been trying to do at work is turning off all notifications, putting my phone away for a certain amount of time. So rather than doing like a checklist of things, it's like for an hour, you're just going to work on one project and then putting everything away. If I could be rewarded at the end of that hour, wow, that would be lovely. That would help me do the, kick the bad habit. Could be anything. Could be anything that you like doing. Mm. So in terms of the bad habits, it's quite interesting. In the first instance, the kind of the easiest way to do it is to change the routine in the first instance so you still leave the cue as it is okay okay you still have the reward as it is but you change the routine with something that gives you a similar reward and once your routine is in place then you start changing the cues and the rewards potentially and again this is in quite tricky habits like for instance there are studies on former smokers so again, if they replace the routine with a, that had the similar reward, such as doing push-up, having a piece of Nicorette, or simply relaxing for a few minutes, then they had a much higher chances of staying smoke-free. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if we try at first instance to change the cue that is in our environment or change the craving we have for the bad habit then we will be using lots of energy to have the kind of resistance for it, right? We, if we're craving something, like I think the food comes in mind. If you have a craving for something, it's really difficult to stop that craving. It's difficult to stop that craving for a sugar, for a chocolate. But if you could have something healthier that gives you the same boost, you're already getting out of the bad habits slowly and surely. So with bad habits, because they're very strong, you need to be a bit like you go in levels. First, you change your routine that gives you similar reward. Then you start experimenting with having some cues to help you to move towards positive habits. And then, yes, you reward yourself if you stick with a positive habit rather than negative one. Yeah, nice. And that kind of leads me to the question about willpower. So how willpower is important in the creation of our habits? What happened to your dare when it comes to willpower? Willpower is essential. Because <laughs> I have to want to do it. There's got to be that thing there. The reading in the morning, obviously, it wasn't important enough to me or I didn't want it enough. And I'm much rather just sleeping in. <laughs> Yeah, so you're right. Willpower is crucial in the 
habit formation, but the reason we have the relapses, so we can start a great habit and then we don't do it anymore or we go back to our bad habit is because our willpower is like a muscle. Oh. It can get tired out. Yeah. Will you lose the will? Yeah. You, you, you have days where it's just you used up your willpower on something else. So then it's difficult to stick with your habit. Yeah. And this is when the relapse happen. And obviously the moment the relapse happen, we feel quite comfortable in the old habits. So we just go back to that. That's why Sean Acor in the book, The Happiness Advantage, he says that we should not be relying only on our willpower. We should be helping the habit formation through the path of least resistance. So when we're creating a good habit, we want to have a path of least resistance. And when we want to break bad habits, we want to have the path of more resistance. So what he means in here, he gives the example of trying to play a guitar. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to come back from work every day and play a guitar for 10 minutes. But every time he would come home from work, he would sit down and put telly on and he would not do it. Mm. Can you think of similar situation in your life with habits like that? 100%. Reading's my main thing at the moment. I never read. I want to read, but I don't. I just watch TV. Yeah. Exercise more, go for walks more. But then, yeah, we get sucked in with other things. Mm. But then he realized that when he came home, he guitar was being in a box, in a wardrobe, in his bedroom. So in order to go from living room to get the guitar, to pull it out of the box, etc. It, it was quite a lot of effort needed. Whereas the remote control and TV were just there. Yeah. And it was very easy to just put the TV on. So he reversed that. He put his guitar next to his favorite chair in which he always would sit down. So the guitar was there. So that was the path of the least resistance. Yeah. There was no excuse. You, he was sitting in the chair and he could just grab for the guitar. Very easy to do. And then he would remove his batteries from his remote control. So then... That became the path of more resistance for the bad habit. Yes, I love this. Because he needed to then go find the batteries, put them in the remote control, so he couldn't just flip the TV on. He actually succeeded that he played the guitar every single day for months and months. Wow, amazing. Yes. So how you could apply that in your habit of reading? I love the sound of your favorite chair. But I think it's like, oh, it's like sitting out the front of the house, have a chamomile tea outside the front of the house and read on a nice, nice area. Or you can make it very simple. The moment you're alarmed, yeah. you can just have a book on the pillow next to you. You just roll out and you just open it. Okay, that's much easier. That's the path of least resistance that he's talking about. Yeah, I'm really making it hard. Okay, so tomorrow, tonight, I'm going to put the book on my pillow. And I'm going to see if when I wake up, I just move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is good. Okay, so interestingly, we may think of happiness as something that happens to us or we're just happy or unhappy. But the truth is that the happiness is a formation of habits. So research shows that happy people engage in happiness boosting habits. They have certain practices, routines that supports their happiness so that they almost ensure that every day happiness is a habit for them. So what habits do you think can help us to be happy? Well, like the meditations, exercise, self-caring habits. So I think everyone needs to think about what it is that makes them happy and then you create the habits that make that possible for you. As you just said, it's having right habits to help you to get that happiness going. So when there are days that things are difficult, if you stick with your happy habits, you will be happier. But it's just understanding that concept that happiness is a habit. Mm. And then also thinking what habits may be are not leading to your happiness and how you can change them. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Action for Happiness reviewed the latest research and found that happy people have very specific habits and they call them the 10 keys to happier living. And together they spell great dream. Mm. Each of the letters stands for something very specific. Should we go through it? Yes. G. G for giving. So doing things for other people. Uh. For relating. Connecting with other people. E. Exercising. Taking care of your body. A. Awareness. Living mindfully and incorporating meditation. T. Trying out. Learning new things. D. Direction. Having goals to look forward to. Ah. Uh. Resilience, finding ways to bounce back when things go tough. E. Emotions, looking for what's good, so trying to be optimistic. A. Acceptance, being comfortable with who you are. M. Meaning, being part of something bigger. Mm, More meaning for me. Meaning was the one that jumped out as quite inspiring. But then it's quite interesting to thinking what habits can you build that can give you more meaning in life. Yeah. So you feel that you are part of something bigger. Yeah. For me, resilience, because I definitely think that it's something that we have, but it would be quite interesting to have a habit of what am I doing or almost like a toolbox when things go tough. Yeah. So you just habitually dive into that. Yeah. Rather than maybe my catastrophizing. Yeah. You can easily adopt a positive habit of starting your day by making your bed. Apparently, research shows that making your bed in the morning increases your well-being and boosts your overall productivity. I knew it. I always make my bed. My other half makes our bed. Oh, yeah, but maybe it's just the fact that it's getting done is enough. Okay, so habit is an action that is repeated so frequently that it's done unconsciously. If we're trying to change or develop new habits, we should concentrate on keystone habits. Those are the habits that will affect various parts of our life, even they happen only once during our day. And every habit is composed of three elements, Kitty. Oh, for goodness sake. (laughs) Cue, routine, reward. Cue's routine, reward, okay. Perfect. So to develop good habits, we need to create those three elements and we need to have a strong craving for the reward. To change the bad habits, the easier way is to first to replace the routine with a new one that leads to similar reward. And if we wish to boost our happiness, it's good to develop happy habits. And we spoke about 10 keys that according to research, can lead to happier and more fulfilling life. Great dream. Yay! Yay! See, I remember the acronym. So we just need to create special acronyms for you. (laughs) So next time, next episode will be the letter I for innovation. Boom, boom, boom. Claudia, I dare you to innovate your every day. Take something that you do every day, one of your habits, and I want you to innovate it. Oh, I love that. I can already feel the creativity flowing down and I can use my creative juices every day. Love it. And Kitty? I'll join you. Yes, you need to. This is a must. I'm looking forward to this dare, actually. I need to think about what I'm going to innovate. Yeah, I think this is going to be really fun. I think it will be really fun. You can really get creative. And I think doing something that you do every day in a different way can give can give it a more joy. Amazing. Well, I hope everyone's enjoyed listening to us talking. I know I love talking with you every time, Claudia. It's so much fun. And if you have enjoyed it, make sure you tell somebody about this podcast today. And also like and subscribe. Yeah, or you can make it your habit to listen to this podcast on a regular basis. Boom! (laughs) Yes, Claudia, on brand. Either way, we dare you to be happy. Bye-bye! Bye!